This is the Horse Radio Network. This is episode 279 of the Dressage Radio Show on the Horse Radio Network, brought to you by Kentucky Performance Products, Easy Signs Online, and TotalSaddleFit.com. This is Reese Koffler Stanfield from Georgetown, Kentucky. And this is Philip Parks from Fergus, Ontario. And you're listening to the Dressage Radio Show with our producer, Glenn. He's back. Hey, guys. Joining us Good to be show. back Hi, again. guys. <laughs> I missed you guys. Seems like forever since I talked to you guys. It's been a yeah. while. It has it's been a long time. Three weeks. Yeah. yeah. That's all right. But it, always, it is always weird in this. It, it, you know, I don't talk to you guys for like a week and a half, and I like go and withdraw. <laughs> it's part it's of the routine true. now, right? It's part of the it routine. is. I'm like, Philip, I miss you. Glenn, I miss you. Well, you know, you guys have been doing it long enough that it it is a routine now. It's been yeah. so long. So It That's, is. Yeah. It's good. I love and it. And I appreciate so that, by the way. So, just saying. <laughs> I bet. I bet, for sure. Yeah, no problem. No problem. <laughs> So, so what what's you, news? Any, anybody got any news? What's going on? I've got. I, I've had a busy. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if anybody else feels this way, but fall just seems to be so busy for us here. It's there seems yeah. to be something every day, every night. Um, but uh, we had a great weekend here. We had uh, our fall clinic with Conrad Schumacher. Uh, he is, nice. you know, part of my family, and um, we had a great weekend of rides. Um, I rode my new horses with him, and that was always a little nerve-wracking because you always want your trainer to like your new horses. Now, uh, um, wait a minute. Last yeah. time we talked, there weren't new horses in your barn. So. Oh, I have two new horses. So they are here. Philip and I uh, helped, Philip helped me pick them out in uh, Holland. We got them from Holland, so they are here and uh, working, and it, we're getting in routine. Again, I think everybody feels that when you get new horses in. Uh, it takes, takes a week takes or a so. Lot. Takes yeah, at least it, a week. Come on. At least. Yeah, we're finally sort of in a routine. Um, I can only imagine what it's like to have an actual child because um, everything <laughs> is just weird for a while. And um, But they're doing great. Well, what and are the names? We have uh, Zodion, and then we have his name is Hello, and he's uh, a baby yeah. horse. So Zodion, very... Zodion could Zodion. be like a Greek god. He's yeah. pretty cool. He's you know, doesn't that cool sound like a Greek like god name? Like Greek an god an Zodion. Or he something. feels very he's God very of dressage. Cool. God of dressage. So we're looking forward. I will keep you in touch with those guys for sure. But they're doing beautifully. And um, have you posted pictures yet? No, no pictures yet. We'll we'll wait a little while for pictures, but um, we'll post some pictures here shortly. And they're doing great though. And um, the whole clinic was good. And um, you know, it's just good to have your trainer in. You know, I rode four times yesterday for Mr. Schumacher. So I'm not gonna lie. I slept like a baby. I, I haven't slept through the night in months and <laughs> I couldn't even get up when my alarm went well, off. Now so I, that's... I do have to ask you, were one of the new horses responsible for the big bruise on your leg that you were showing off in that one picture on Facebook? Uh, no, I, I think I got that in Mexico. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I got that on I got that on you vacation. You got that on vacation. Okay. Yeah, I got that on vacation. Yeah. Actually, we were so make make a long story short, we were in this dolphin. We were playing with dolphins, which was beautiful and fun. And and we were doing we were in kayaks. And actually, our friend was in the kayak next to us, and we were racing. And he, uh, he got my leg with his paddle. Oh. <laughs> it's still bruised. It hurts really badly. Oh. But it had nothing to do with horses, actually, magically. Be, beware of kayak racing, I'm just going to say. Um, <laughs> with any friend in any competitive situation, <laughs> it could be bad. But Beware. 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 So uh, we did that. And um, I also have to give a really big shout out. Uh, maybe we'll get her on the show. Uh, to one of my students was second at the American Eventing Championships, Kelly Quick. And her horse's name is Better Than Chocolate. And uh, they were, um, I know, which I love, reserve champion at Beginner Novice uh, here in Texas. So I am, uh, my heart is bursting for them. And I also had uh, last week um, a rider get her silver medal. Kelly Mardell uh, got her silver medal. So we've had a, it's been, like I said, it's been a crazy busy fall here, um, but all wonderful, wonderful things. So that's my news of the week. So. Yeah, Philip, how good about you? Hear, it's good to hear it. Everything's good. What do, what do we got going on the show this week? 
Yeah, so we have a really good show. Um, we have a dear friend of both Philip and, and mine. We've known her. Oh, I've known Megan for many, many years. Uh, Megan McIsaac. She's going to give us a report uh, from Dressage at Devon. She just went and won Sis a fourth. Return, yeah. yeah, she yeah. just got back tonight and and won a fourth level test three class, a big class. So she is on literally on cloud nine. You'll really enjoy hearing about dressage at Devon. And then we have a wonderful tip from an S judge, Debbie Savage. Uh, she's going to talk about uh, just reading the rule book, which sounds so simple, but it's so not. So uh, we have a really <laughs> good show tonight. So uh, that'll be fun. So Philip, what's in the news? Well, we've just been talking about the big, uh, the big horse show, uh, big invitational horse show at, uh, at Central Park in New York. I think it was most people that we've talked to, a big success and a really fun event. Um, it was won by Isabel Worth. So um, I think a lot of people really, um, you know, took advantage of getting exposure to a really big show because, uh, you know, Isabel and, and it doesn't really come over. She doesn't come over to to Florida and stuff like that. So, she, you know, and, uh, you know, for one of her, it was a great show. Yeah, yes. we had we had one of our listeners who reported on it uh, for us for the morning show, and she came on, and she went to everything, saw every class there was over four days, and <laughs> she said, you know, it's really special when the sun just went down and the lights were on, seeing all of the skyscrapers in the background. She said from her seat, she had the view of the arena and the skyscrapers in the background. And yeah, she I said, saw a couple of, uh, of that photos cool? of that. Awesome. Yeah, it looked yeah. really cool. Awesome. Yeah, she she yeah. was thrilled by it. She said they uh, have a five or six year contract for that, so it should continue. It was a big success, sold out most days, um, and the tickets weren't cheap either. They were two hundred fifty bucks, so it was not cheap, but yet it was a big success. So they were very happy with it. Excellent, yeah. that is awesome. cool. And, and you know what? We have to bring oh, those yeah. people would never see dressage. No, you know, if, if you're not bringing right. it to them, they're not going to travel to go to it. So, uh, right. it's I got to come to the cities. Yeah, right? yeah. The you horses know, have to go to the cities. L.A. had a big show this weekend down at the uh, in Hollywood at the convention center. They did a big jumper show, and they're talking about expanding that. So there might be dressage classes on that. Um, and apparently that was a big hit and sold out, and it brought out a lot of celebrities. They had a red carpet and everything. So you know, I think the more of that we can do, the better. And they had a lot of money. I mean, it wasn't like it was you know <laughs> jump change either. There was a lot of money sure. involved. So sure. Oh, I love it. I love it. And uh, Dressage at Devon also was over the weekend. Megan will talk about it here in a little while. But Philip, what are, what were some results from Dressage at Devon? Well, I mean, as everyone knows, there's just a, a ton of classes there. So we'll just try and uh, you know shorten it a little bit. Some interesting stuff because we've had. Uh, some of the writers come on the show and talk to us. I think to note was um, uh, young writer classes were all of them were won by David Ziegler with uh, Pen Penezuela <laughs> Top Man, and we had him on the show not too long ago after Young Writers. He was a uh, double gold medalist, so that was kind of cool. Um, the small tour was uh, also swept by uh, Olivia Legoy Welts with Racing's La Noir, and she's been on our show. A couple of times, good friend of recent eyes, and, and uh, it was really awesome to see her name in the, t in the top scores there. And then we'll move on to the, what else we got here? We got the Grand Prix. Uh, for the special, was won by Allison Brock and the horse called Roosevelt. It was nice to see in, in the Grand Prix for special, Heather Blitz and Paragon back in showing. We had talked to her, and she had said that she was taking a short break. From showing him, and I think it, lo it looks like she's back into competing, and and he uh, he got sixty nine, pretty good score, and and pretty. Uh, and I want to um, say Heather was awesome injured. Class. I want to say Heather oh, yeah. broke a, broke her leg or something. She she herself has been injured. Uh, I do right. know that, and so um, we're we're glad to see her back. And also, Silver Martin rode in competition yeah. for the first time again, and that was uh, again a friend of ours. And and glad to he see her back in in the yeah, show ring. She had a fall off of a horse, a pretty nasty fall off a horse, and uh, and now she's back showing again. You can see some articles about her. Um, you know, if you look around the internet a little bit, and then the. Grand Prix for the Kerr, uh, Ashley Holzer and a horse uh, Tiva, Na uh, Tiva Nana were the winner, and also she won the Kerr as well. So lots of uh, top competitors from Canada there at Devon and doing really well, so congratulations from them. And just huge, huge classes. I think the, the Priest and George was 50 riders or something like that. Wow. Incredible. Like, 
yeah, I mean, and top, top quality rides and scores were way up there and and just awesome. Yeah, awesome, super cool. So uh, Megan's going to talk about it a little bit more when she comes on. Um, I think right now we'll probably take a commercial break. This Nutrition Minute is brought to you by Kentucky Performance Products, the company that simplifies your search for research-proven nutritional supplements at kppusa.com. Have you heard of a yeast called Saccharomyces boulardii? It's a type of probiotic that benefits your horse's digestive tract. Often referred to as S. boulardii, it works in several different ways. One unique property of S. boulardii is that it supports the stimulation of the enzymes found in the intestinal lining. These enzymes help your horse digest starches and sugars in the small intestine. When the sugars and starches are more completely digested, Fewer of them escape into the hindgut where they can ferment and cause imbalances that may lead to colic, diarrhea, and laminitis. Saccharomyces boulardii is found in Nalox Advanced, made by Kentucky Performance Products. Nalox Advanced contains a blend of yeast, fermentation solubles, and stomach buffers. These ingredients work together to maintain your horse's digestive tract in peak condition. Nalox Advanced is recommended for horses of all ages and stages and is fed on a daily basis. This Nutritional Minute has been brought to you by Kentucky Performance Products. You can find all of their terrific products at kppusa.com. Well, it is always our pleasure to have both Philip and my friend on Megan McIsaac. She's from Wisconsin and she what? just went to Devon <laughs> and won the fourth level test three. So she just got Yay. back 45 minutes ago. Megan, welcome onto the show again. Yay. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited. <laughs> I bet that, you, that is something to be proud of. I've been watching on Facebook all week and couldn't have been more excited for you and your success. You deserve it. Of all the Thank people you. I know, I was Aww. thrilled. So Megan, <laughs> tell us about Devin. Was this your first time at Devin? This was my second time. I went in 2007 and I've always wanted to get back and compete at Devin and the stars just didn't line up. And this year it did. It was we had been planning on it, um, I don't know, from the beginning of the year, but unfortunately my my horse, um, who was owned by Michelle Miller, uh, his name is uh, Buenos Noches, we call him G or Awesome Sauce, um, <laughs> last year he had um, EPM. And so we were actually talking about retiring him in January. And we just kept working him and kept working him and he got better. It kept getting better, and I was like, let's do this. You know, we we don't know what's going to happen, and um, he just kept getting stronger. Our qualifying scores um, were high enough uh, that we made it into the cut, and it was so amazing to just, you know, these are famous showgrounds with the food is incredible. To look around that there's a stadium, I got to ride in the lights twice, um, and to see like people I admire, Olympians, some of the best riders in the world, some of the best horses in the world. It's just, it's just incredible. It's a dream come true is all I can say for sure. Um, and then just, uh, just the fabulous horses and the footing was incredible. It rained on Thursday and, um, we had no problem on Friday with the footing. It was a little soggy Thursday night. Um, but just, I, I wish there was a facility like this in, in Wisconsin. It's amazing. Now, now how far was the drive, Megan? Uh, it was 16 hours for us. Yeah. 16 Mm -hmm. hours. We left on Tuesday at three o'clock in the morning. Michelle and I took off and, um, Oh, it was a, it was a really long drive. And so we left Sunday, yesterday, um, we broke it in half and we spent the night in Ohio at a bed and breakfast. And then we just did the second leg of the trip today. And, and, oh, and I forgot to say about the people, the people are just so nice. So halfway through our trip, um, to Devon, we brought a therapy plate with us and I forgot the controller and, um, 
luckily Sarah Plate was there and we called them up and said, Hey, can we borrow your controller? Because it's use the plate is useless without the controller. And every day they um they let me use it for goodie and they also stretch me out. So I gotta say thank you to Chip and Marie. And all the competitors were incredibly nice and supportive. Um, I loved all our neighbors. So it's just, it's a really special experience. Oh, that is fabulous. So tell us, I know Devin is really known for shopping. How was that? Uh-huh. <laughs> um, <laughs> I spend a little too much money. Um, mm-hmm. That's what I was yep. thinking. Yeah, I bought some pants and I bought, I actually bought a hat with feathers and I bought a lot of presents for like my mom. She took care of the farm while I was gone. So I bought her a ton of presents and we were looking at boots. Um, It's just, it's unreal. The jewelry, um, the saddles, the tack, it's, it's amazing. And there are these little shops and they just keep, it's endless. It keeps going and going and going. I, I loved every minute of it. So, so what? What from the competition did you get to see? Any of the CDI or, or that 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 um, that you were watching while you were there? Sure did. Um, it's always fun to see the young horse classes. Um, we did see the CDI, and wow, Philip Canada has really amazing horses. Whoa! Is what I gotta say. Just what? They... Thank you. I know that, but yeah. Okay. <laughs> I, I love U.S. but Canada. We need to step it up. I mean, it was one horse after the next was just incredible. And to watch Ashley Holter in the freestyle, she she did an amazing job. And one of my favorites is Jackie Brooks in Goose. Um, they also did a, a super job. Her energy is just fantastic. Um, the All of the freestyles were great. Um, I, I'm just blown away by Ashley, actually. So... Um, uh, really a kudos to her. Yeah, I mean, she's very, very, very talented and, and, and has, you know, a successful horse after a successful horse after. after oh, and the, horse, other, so. the other unique thing was is um, two of her students, or maybe they're not her students, but um, colleagues uh, rode her horses. Breaking Dawn was also in the Grand Prix, as well as Pop Art. So I thought that was yeah. really unique and says something to her training. So, yeah, and all of the horses, all three of them looked fantastic. So, it, and it just, I don't know, it makes you want to sit up taller. It makes you want to ride better. I was so inspired by, by all of the riders. And I have to say, I just feel, I feel really good to be able to come from Wisconsin and, and to do so well. So I'm, I'm feeling really thankful that I have a great horse and a great owner. So, so- yeah. Megan, tell us about your rides. How did that go? Um, awesome. And it was, it definitely was a learning curve because this was the first uh, show I've taken this horse to, um, that was 16 hours, um, which is really a lot of wear and tear on a, on a horse. And he was hot. He was, he, he kind of looked around and he was like, I belong here. This is where I belong. And he just had, springs on his feet and he felt fantastic the first two days and then he started to get a little bit tired and um so the first three rides were really good i rode all all four level classes i think it was five classes total and um the class that i won was um the very last class and what was great is i rode four two at the in the morning on sunday so that would have been yesterday it feels like a little three days ago and I, I loved it because I got the judge's comments back and the judge at B um, made the comment that it was too conservative and I really needed to take risks and so I thought about it and I'm like okay I'm going to give it my all and I had worked on engagement they had wanted me to have the horse a little bit more collected and that's hard for him and um, so that horse after five days he gave me his all in his last test and I was so it was awesome. I smiled every ride. It was it was amazing in that last ride that, you know, he was tired after five days and gave it his all. It was really cool. So I'm super, super happy with him. And he won. And I won. Yeah. And you won. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you can say that won. too. Come on. <laughs> Come on. Don't be too modest. So, so maybe... 
maybe you can give us um, maybe a tip or two about what what makes a successful fourth level test. What are some things that uh, you know riders who are riding fourth level you would say you know really make sure you nail this or that and 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 how can you help them? Um, well, know the test because all three tests are very different. Um, my guy, he's not very good at the walk pirouette, and so the best test uh, for him is the four three. Um, the other two tests have walk pirouettes and really knowing your strengths and weaknesses. Um, we've been working on the canter pirouettes, which is also, um, a big weakness. Um, but we scored, I think 6.5 on them. So, um, I'm really, really proud of him having, having a better engagement, really thinking towards like the pre-St. George, I think is really important. Um, trying to think, um, He's and being consistent. The main thing about him, he's not um, like a nine horse. You don't go. He he doesn't blow you away. But what he blows you away on is how relaxed he can be and how consistent throughout the entire test he is. And he was so relaxed. And I think that's that's really important. So that's what I recommend is consistent, consistent and, and work. That, and that four three, it, it's not an easy test. I no. think it's a very difficult test at four three. Mm-hmm. No joke. Yeah, that's no joke. Him out. Yeah, and that's the, his strongest test um, for both of us. I felt really confident going in and and just giving it my all, and and he did too. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. I think I it's personally harder than think, the pre St. George. Yeah, I, I was going to say, I think the pre St. George is way easier. Anytime I get a 4 3 horse, I'm like, oh, maybe I can just add a few changes and do pre St. George. It's it's easier. <laughs> yeah. Just like that, right? <laughs> it's just easier than that 4 <laughs> 3. Like I, that that. 4 3 is a really long test, and there's a lot of turns, and it, it's it's not an easy test at all. So it's well, a I mean, yeah, it's, they're going to be changing it, from, right? So. Oh, yeah, you go from the extension <laughs> right into like the zigzag and then you know it's letting him go and bringing him back i think is is really hard and being able to you know ride your tempo transitions for sure right exactly exactly so megan what's next on the list <laughs> um <laughs> regionals <laughs> yay yeah, next week I'm here so- in lexington we're getting having I- Everyone, I think everyone in the country is coming here. It's a, a huge regionals. It's 600 horses or something. So it's going to be a big, big time party. <laughs> I'm very, very excited for regionals. Um, I can't wait. It's, it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, I'm ready. And, um, what, you know, I forgot one thing about um, the other thing, getting to fourth level and, and advising people is having a great team. Um, I I really have a great team, and that means my vet, my farrier, and I also have a great coach who um, is Jane Ayers, and she um, having someone to to talk to and say, hey, what do you think about this is really important. And so I got to pull my kudos out to them, and I can't forget them. So sorry about that. No, I think that's a, just a great reminder. Our team is is so important from I, our vets and our farriers, our owners, our trainers. I, I mean, it, it you won, but it wasn't just you out there uh, no. and, and your horse as well. No, it was the TheraPlay people. It was, um, you know, my masseuse um, and my acupuncturist. I mean, it took a whole team to get here. This horse was really sick in January, and I couldn't have done it with, with all of them behind me. So I cannot forget them. Oh, awesome. Yeah. That's a great reminder. And, and we have one other reminder we wanted to talk about. Um, yep. And actually, your purse got stolen, right? What happened it with sure that? It sure did. Um, we were at the awards ceremony, and someone came into our attack room and took our purse. Well, my purse um, was probably out on, our, on my little cubby. And then my owner's purse, Michelle's purse, um, she had tucked it in her attack tack box and folded it in her coat someone went through that and took her wallet out of her purse and then our neighbor um amy howard um her purse was stolen and then when we contacted the police it was seven people total and um i just want to say lock your tack room i've never locked my tack room in 25 years and first time um anything has ever been stolen so i've learned a lesson and won't do that again um 
and they found our purses uh, two parking lots away. Someone had just dumped them and taken the cash. So um, that's a definite lesson for me. I won't. I won't do that again. Yeah, so and, and I. Yeah, that happened to me too. It, it, it mm-hmm. same thing. We we were at WEF actually in the in the secured stabling in the FEI stabling. Same thing. We went up to the award ceremony. We had put our purses in the tack trunk. Uh, we didn't mm-hmm. lock the tack trunk, which would have been the smart thing to do. Um, but somebody went through the tack trunk and stole our cash as well. Same thing. Dumped the purses. Didn't want the credit cards. They just wanted the cash. Um, but I wanted to yeah. just, I thought it was important to talk about on the show. Uh, you've had it happen. I've had it happen. Um, you know, I don't, I just don't bring any cat. I don't bring anything into the horse show. If I have to, it's like a credit card or, or something very, I, I just don't bring any cash anymore. And I don't bring my whole person to the tech room. So just mm-hmm. thought it was a good reminder going into all of our fall shows and hopefully uh, nobody ever has to deal with it. But um, I thought it was a good reminder, but um, yeah. going back, yeah, but going back to the happy note, you guys are home safe and sound and have regionals next week. Um, so, Megan, we just can't tell you enough. Thanks for coming on the show and giving it, us a Devon report. And uh, how do our listeners find you online? Um, you can go to my website, which is lindenhoff.com, uh, L-I-N-D-I-N-H-O-F.com, or I'm on Facebook under Megan McIsaac or Lindenhoff. So, Come friend me or send me an email. I'm happy to help out in any way I can. Great. Thanks, Megan. Thank you. This week's EasySignsOnline.com Spotlight product is their New England Style Farm Signs, their most popular line of signs. New England Style Farm Signs are very durable and designed for long-term outdoor use with no maintenance required, no wood to rot, and no paint to peel. They will outlast the old-style painted wood signs by many, many years. They are available in many sizes, shapes, and styles, which makes them the perfect sign for any farm or business. Go online today and go through the EasySignsOnline.com easy step-by-step ordering process to see all the prices and options available. They also offer free, no-obligation sign proofs on all New England-style signs. And you get free shipping as well on all New England-style signs. So replace your old worn-out sign and make a great first impression with a new farm sign from EasySignsOnline.com. And the holidays are right around the corner, so it's a terrific gift idea. I can't think of a better one. Visit EasySignsOnline.com. Well, as you can see, Megan is just such an excited person. She's just wonderful and brings such spirit to the sport and uh, couldn't be happier, both Philip and I, that she did so well at Devon. So after this commercial break, we are going to come back with our total saddle fit tip of the week from S. Judge Debbie Savage. This week's dressage training tip is brought to you by Total Saddle Fit, home of the shoulder relief girth at totalsaddlefit.com. Well, this evening, I'm really excited to introduce Debbie Savage, Lake Erie's college instructor in the equine studies program who specializes in dressage. Debbie, welcome to the program. Thank you. It's terrific to be here. Well, um, a couple, actually last weekend, um, the uh, freshman class from Lake Erie College came to my farm here in Lexington. They were on a tour and I was talking with Mary Pardee and she was so very excited that you are now at Lake Erie College. This is a relatively new position for you, isn't it? Yes, it is. I just uh, joined the organization over the summertime. This is my first semester. So it's pretty exciting. It's a very different um, type of lifestyle for me. It's a major change in um, professionalism. I've been actually in um, the publishing field for many years, but also in the horse world. So when this opportunity came along and I knew a couple of other people that were involved in it, I called them up and said, what do you think about this? And they said, oh, it would be perfect for you. So I gave the dean a Hall. We had a nice chat and a couple of interviews later, here I am in Ohio. Love it. And where were you from originally? 
oh, originally a long, long time ago, <laughs> Lake Charles, Louisiana, but I spent most of the last 25 some odd years in the New Jersey area, um, which, as you know, still is very serious horse country, too. Right, right. Excellent. Well, tell us a little bit about Lake Erie College since we have you on. It's a really terrific program. It has reputation as being one of really the best programs in the country. Um, I was first introduced to it a couple of years ago when I was invited to judge there. So I was judging along with another friend of mine, and I was just very impressed with the quality of the facility, the quality of the students, the quality of the horses. Um, it just really struck me as a very special place. So when I realized or when I found out they were looking for a position, I said, I remember that place. They were great. I think that's something I should really look into. So, um, you know, that was the impression that it made on me was uh, the quality, just overall quality excellence is there by line. And where is it? Where is it located exactly? It's about 30 miles east of Cleveland. Not far from actual Lake Erie. Um, we are not on the college campus. We are about five miles away, but we are up on top of a beautiful hill with an incredible view that on a clear day you can see on the horizon the lake. So we'll be seeing the snow coming in too this winter. No doubt. <laughs> that's, what, that's what I was just <laughs> thinking. I was like, oh my goodness. <laughs> Wow. I used to, I used to the, coach. The uh, great a thing team about the, the facility is it's is it's for the most part one big huge facility. So yeah. the front of the building it's two stories. It's got classrooms, offices, a beautiful lobby. Um, uh, it's got a concession area. It's a beautiful front area that opens out and looks onto a huge stadium sized indoor. And then beyond that is a warm-up arena that's connected to it. And then beyond that is the border barn. So it's all one large, long complex. And then right next to it, we have the um, school barn, as we call it. And the school barn is, is quite huge. There's about 60 horses stabled in there. And then it has a whole other section added to it that could stable probably another 40-some-odd horses. It has a stallion um, um, lab all set up, um, so they have a breeding program that runs there. Um, Dr. Pam Hess is our dean. She's an equine veterinarian. Very handy to have, let me tell you. I bet. <laughs> and uh, several really wonderful instructors. Mary Parkey that you mentioned has been um, with a Erie College well over eight years as far as I know. And it's because of the types of programs like she does where she took all of those freshman students down to Kentucky and gave them the most fabulous tour that those students would never have access to. I wanted to go with them, so, actually. <laughs> they, they yeah, going I mean, they are going to some wonder, you know, they go to a number of really wonderful places. So they get a great introduction. That's intro to the industry. Oh, how, how much better does it get than Kentucky, right? Mm -hmm. Love it. Love it. Absolutely. Well, Debbie, you are also an S judge. Um, and we asked you also to talk about the college, but give us a judge's uh, tip for all of our listeners. So uh, yep. let's change gears and talk a little bit about okay. um, a judge's Happy tip. Happy to. Happy Great. to. Um, judging is my passion. I've been judging for just about 20 years now. I've been the senior dressage judge since the year um, 2010, so a good four years, and the road is long and hard, but the uh, United States Equestrian Federation has a really wonderful judge training program. They have trained us well, and most importantly, as I've learned going up through these levels and, and even at, now that I'm at the Grand Prix level, one thing that strikes me was so many of uh, the serious competitors, and this is amateur and professional alike, it really doesn't matter, is how few of them really read the rule book. It amazes me that they are not as familiar with the details and requirements of our sport. Um, so that's one thing I always say is read your rule book. It will tell you exactly what we're looking for. It's right there, and it's free. Download exactly. it off the website. Right. Um, but to me, that's really, really important. It starts in the beginning where it talks about the overall um, 
object and general principles of dressage, that it's the development of the horse into a happy athlete through harmonious education. And what our goal is, is that it makes the horse calm, supple, loose, and flexible, but also confident, attentive, and keen, thus achieving perfect understanding with the rider. Now, that's a tall order, that paragraph. But then the book will go through and start to itemize things for you. And so often I find um, those that are spending so much time, energy, putting their heart into it, not to mention, you know, it's not inexpensive to compete, that they're just not as familiar with a lot of the requirements um, of the test that they're riding. For example, in second level, we have simple changes at the canter now. They're not ever sure. Well, what exactly is a simple change? I've seen them ridden just about every kind of way you can possibly imagine. But if you'll read in the rule book under canter, and it talks about the simple change of lead, it says with three, two, five clearly defined steps of walk. So another example on things that are, how many, what should I do? Uh, You know, do those trot steps count? Those sorts of things. Um, So it goes on, um, our rule book goes on to give you uh, definitions of all the gates, all the transitions, all the movements. It gives you really clear movement um, directions and directives on working on two tracks and lateral movements. And then also, as you move up into the pirouettes and, of course, the passage and piaf, um, then they'll go into the parts that we talk about for the rider position and aids of the rider. So, so much valuable information here. Um, Beyond that, um, the section that's critical for competitors to be familiar with are, are the test for dressage competitions. Again, we will tell you everything you need to know about all of the different tests. Every test level has what's written as a purpose. And these purposes, training level, first level, second level, they all have a purpose. And if you go through those and you understand what the judge is looking for, what the questions are that the tests that are asking, really, I think, can help you put in a much more polished performance. No, and I think... Then it'll it'll go into, you know, participation. You need to understand, um, competitors need to understand the rules for clothing, the rules for uh, use of voice. I've had several competitors not know that using the voice in the competition is two, a minimum of two points off per score box. Um, So again, there's 10, 11 things that are listed as um, for elimination, wrong tack, wrong number. Uh, You know, dressage is just so incredibly detail-oriented. And I know it's difficult to remember all these things, but it's just so important to really be familiar with um, the meat of, of what you're doing in these programs. Um, and then finally, of course, really having a better understanding of what the scale of the marks means. Um, we oftentimes get a little hung up on the numbers. Um, and I think sometimes if you think about what the numbers mean, it might make a little bit more sense. For example, that six number, six, means satisfactory. That's a pretty wide range, satisfactory. Of course, for the last couple of years now, we've been using half points, and I think that helps for everyone now so that you don't have to agonize over whether it's a 6 or a 7. It can be a 6.5, and that, I think, has seen some of the test scores go up a bit to be able to use that point five. So overall, I think that would be the one thing I think competitors could do that could really help them have a better understanding of their sport and then a better um, performance overall. Oh, I think you're you're totally right. I think um, in, in trainers as well. I think um, I, I went through the L program 
And I think oh, that good. I think everybody should do it. I, I really I personally don't oh, like I to agree do it. Oh, I agree a thousand percent. It's so yeah. good. It is so good because you, you look you look at that and, and you look, why was that a six and not a seven or six, five right. and not a seven or what is an eight or what's a nine or what's a 10? We hope we see that in our life. Yeah. And um, so I think that that anything you can do, I mean, at the end of the day, it's it's really helpful to know why the judges are giving you the scores. Um, right. But I think going back, you're 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 t- just talking about dress. I was at a horse show a couple of weeks ago and somebody got eliminated for the wrong coat and the wrong test. And it was like, oh and, yeah, they were riding fourth level and went in with the shad belly. Well, you can't do that. And they should know that right. at fourth level. You should know that, but mm-hmm. right. clearly, clearly they didn't. Um, and so uh, you don't want to get eliminated. It's a hard enough sport <laughs> to get eliminated because you're wearing the wrong coat. For um, something like that. Exactly. And, but it's happened. It certainly it, oh, has it happened. Happens all the time. It happens all little yeah. things. Yeah, and as competitors, we're responsible. It's not nobody told me, my trainer didn't tell me. The rider is responsible. And that's why I just think it's so important to um, review these rules and get that perspective. Yeah. Why not? I think, right? it's, I think it's important to review them every year because right. I see it. Oh, you know, they change. As a competition organizer, we get real changes. Every year there's real changes, mm. even just small things that you want to kind of review and go over. And it's a good idea as a as a trainer to say, you know, have you read the rules? Do you want to talk about them a little bit, right? You know, right. do you want to talk about the directors of the test so they, that, you you know, you, you've not only read it, but you you understand what where the, the scores are going to be coming from. And, you know, I, I try and to remember to do that. You know, with my first year competitors, but uh, sometimes get right. a little bit lax about maybe, you know, when you have a rider moving up, you can sometimes forget the directives change, you know, they get more right. complicated and it's good to go back every single year, especially right, you know, maybe not right before your first show, but, you know, as you're coming up to your show season to say, okay, have you read the rules? You know, have you read the directives of your test? Have you, you know, and, and to go, and it's part of the preparation and, uh, you know, you can never be too prepared to be, to be going down the center line, right? A great winter I agree. project. A thousand percent, a thousand percent with that, definitely. And now you know we're going to be changing the uh, USEF test going into next year. The new test should be out, really, I think sometime in October, and they will go into effect December 1st. And I guarantee you for the first few months, yes. we're going to have people riding the wrong, yeah. wrong tests. tests. Yes. Oh. Well, I've and that's seen a good it thing. happen in top level competition they ride the wrong test it happens, oh, absolutely. Prix. It happens all the time, in prix all the time. Ooh, yeah it happens. Yeah. but um right. yeah, i think that's another thing and, and i think this just kind of as a final note the usdf tests are they only print the test part <laughs> they don't print the directive part and the objectives mm-hmm. And, you know, when you pull out that test book, um, when you practice it, that's actually not all the test. And, and they used to print right. it and they stopped printing it, uh, probably cost or whatever. But mm-hmm. you can get the USEF version. And I strongly recommend, um, right. you know, it's the test. It's essentially the test you get when you ride it at a horse show. But right, everybody right. The actual needs to test. Read it. The actual mm-hmm. test, not not just what's in the little book, which is fine, but the actual test, exactly. Uh, yeah, and that's just a huge tip. And now go through your barn, grab every single one of those <laughs> test books and throw them away because, um, <laughs> you know, that, that now there's a stack. I have a stack of them and we put them at the horse show, but they're going to be, they are going to be, get rid of them because you don't want anybody picking it up to read you the wrong test. But, um, Debbie, thank you so much for your insight. This was awesome tonight. And and this is just a great reminder for all of us to do this this winter. And I am putting it on my calendar to sit down one evening, uh, with a glass of wine and go through the rule book. (laughs) It was great. So thank you so much, Debbie. Great tip. How do our listeners find you online and find some more information about the college? Um, Lake Erie College, L-E-C dot E-D-U online and look up the equine program and we'll all be there. Great. Thanks so much, Debbie. We look forward to having you back. And you too. Thank you. This tip was brought to you by Total Saddle Fit, the shoulder relief girth that Reese and Philip both love.
And here's why. The Saddle Fit solution you have been waiting for is finally here. TotalSaddleFit.com is proud to introduce the Shoulder Relief Girth. This strategically shaped girth actually moves the girth line of your saddle back over one inch, thereby freeing your horse's shoulders from the saddle. Traditional girths pull saddles up against a horse's shoulders and often over the top of the shoulders. The shoulder relief girth's recessed ends allow for the billets to buckle into the girth farther back to give your horse unparalleled freedom of motion. We are so certain that your saddle will fit better and your horse will be more comfortable that for a limited time we are offering a 30-day, 110% money-back guarantee. If you are not totally satisfied with your shoulder relief girth, send it back for a full refund plus 10% of the purchase price. Don't wait. Order now for the best saddle fit solution available. At TotalSaddleFit.com. Visit TotalSaddleFit.com. Well, hey, guys, I hate to be a boss, but uh, your, your emails are backing up. You ask for emails every week, and now they're stacking up a bit. Um, and I have one to start with here first. I had the opportunity to chat. I do on a, uh, about twice a year. I chat with 10 or 12 of our, our best listeners, the ones who listen to a lot of the different shows. They're kind of like a focus group. And I get, you know, opinions and things like that. Don't get nervous here. You're, you're fine. Yeah, you're nervous. Uh, and are we, actually, are we okay? Yeah, yeah, you're okay. Actually, a lot of them listen to you guys because they, like, uh, they like you guys, but they're not necessarily <laughs> dressage riders. But they did, one of them had a specific question. And, and, but you know what it was interesting is a couple of them said, I listened to that because a lot of what they talk about the training-wise applies to everything, not just dressage. And they are right about that. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, you know, they, it's, it's training. You know? um, right. This is riding around on the flat. And not, not <laughs> right, exactly. exactly. Right. You're just not jumping anything <laughs> intentionally. That's um, what happens when you get two <laughs> trainers in the room together. We can't help it. <laughs> <laughs> well, the one question they had, and I thought this was interesting because something you don't think about, is you guys talk, and you mentioned it earlier that you had one of your students get a medal, right? A silver medal right. or a gold medal. I forget medal. what it was. Mm-hmm. And they said, what are these medals? They weren't aware of it in any other about? discipline. Right. And I don't think yeah. they do have them in other disciplines, do they? I don't I don't know, but I'll tell you not a little bit about, no. and, and I'm not sure, Philip, if you have them in Canada, but... We have them, but they're different than yours, so... They're different. You can just, so, yeah, we, we can chat about them well, both. They had red ribbons, too, up they there. They have red so. ribbons, <laughs> yeah. I can't help it, this is okay. not blue. <laughs> but, um, so, so basically, for the USDF, United States Equestrian Federation, you have three rider medals that you can work for. Um, and they are lifetime medals. You can take your whole career to get these medals, but your first medal is a bronze medal. And it's at uh, first, second, and third level. You need two sixty percent from two different judges at each of those levels to get your bronze medal. And then the silver medal is two scores of sixty percent or higher at fourth level and pre St. George. And your gold medal is two scores of sixty percent from two different judges at your uh, intermediate one. And your Grand Prix level. And is that on the same horse, or is this go this for the can be rider? different horses? Uh, That's so this a great is a question. rider award. It's yeah. a rider award, okay. and um, yeah. you know, many of your trainers actually, your trainers should have some medals. To be honest, um, it shows that you're at least uh, sufficient or satisfactory competent, at competent, yeah, competent at those levels. Um, so they're a big deal. When we when we have a rider get them, we actually we have a party for each rider that gets <laughs> them. You know, it's it's a big deal. It's, it's kind of fun, yeah. you know. Some riders work a long time to get those awards and, um, you get a plaque and, and, uh, we, we try to have a big time. I've learned in horses that when you can celebrate, you better celebrate. So, uh, we actually always have a little party and, and I'm working on actually, a a, a just a, an award area. So all my students that I've gotten their medals, um, it, it, you know, we'll go up there. So, so it's a big deal. And, and it, it certainly, some people, um, can get it very quickly and then other people really struggle, you know, your horse gets hurt or, or this or that. And, and so, uh, it's, it's definitely a, a cool thing. So, um, that's yeah. the USDF. So Philip, what's the Canadian one? Yeah. Up in Canada, we have the same, you know, bronze, silver, gold. Um, I don't know exactly. I don't have the information in front of me, but I think the, the bronze is at train level, first level, second level, no, maybe maybe second level is silver. Anyways, um, I think silver is 
third and fourth, and gold would be all the FEI levels. And you can, uh, the rider can earn them, and the horse can earn them separately. And uh, you're just basically, yeah, the same thing. You're trying to get scores above sixty percent, and uh, you can have, like, you can have in Canada the bronze. You can get a medal for bronze first level, then you get a separate bronze medal for for training level, and you know, silver you can, and and gold you can have. Gold in Priest and George, and then you can get a gold medal in I one. You get a gold medal in the Inter A. You know, so each of the levels you can you can you can get a different medal, and the horse is earning them at the same time, and and uh, it's it's cool. It's just you know um, being able to you know put your scores towards an achievement and getting something back for it. So it's just uh, a recognition of 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 good good competition, and, and you know it's it's great to be able to to work towards something like that and be recognized. You know all the names of all the people at the end of year, end of the year that got their medals that year, and the horses are, are published, and you can take a look, and then you have it for your life. You know, lifetime you get your your freestyle awards and stuff like that. So it's cool. It's it's uh, something to work towards. So yeah, um, and there is also that answers the question. Good yeah, enough, well enough. Yeah, yeah. We also have yeah. the freestyle bar. You're right. Yeah, we you also have a, the same awards for freestyles. So, and I'm not as up on those. Um, those are relatively new. The bronze, silver, and gold have been around for, for my career, a long time. I, a long time. Um, in the freestyle bar, there's also those medals as well. So, um, yeah, we hope that answers your question. Very good. Okay. Thank you. Now, I, I have the next. I have the next email question. Okay. Um, from one of our listeners. Um, this is for a rider that lives in upstate New York and plan on riding her horse throughout the, the winter in the indoor. She usually rides for 30 to 60 minutes at moderate work, warm but not getting the horse to sweat, walk trot four to five days a week. He's blanketed in the winter and lives outside. Should she buy a quarter sheet, how and when to use it? Would the Benef- Benefab brand be the most beneficial? So what do you think there? Well, I think the Benefit products are great. Um, those yeah. are super products. Um, I, I have, I, like I said, I have the blanket, um, and I love it. It keeps actually very, very warm. I bought my grandma uh, that blanket and sent her one, and she um, she complains. She was complaining she was too cold, and now she complains she's too hot. So <laughs> <laughs> it clearly warms so her up. Water sheets? Are you using them in the winter? We use them. Um, uh, we do. We clip the horses uh, full body. Um, you know, I don't have horses that stay outside all, all winter. I, I have, I, I, I lie. I have my old mare and the baby stay out. We don't actually clip the baby and she has to grow a coat. Our old mare, who's quite old, senior citizen, she's blanketed quite heavily cause she's older. Um, but we do. And, um, basically we use quarter sheets, um, all the time. Um, you know, when it's, when it's just a little brisk, we'll put a blanket over top and we'll take it off. Uh, when it's really cold, we'll ride with them on. So, um, I'm I'm thinking about degrees. I, it kind of depends, but you know, if I'm taking my rug off, if I'm taking my jacket off cause I'm hot, I usually take the horse's rugs off. Um, but last winter when it was, you know, 20 degrees, uh, we all stayed bundled up. So I sort of use myself as a gauge, but Philip, you would be a better one. I mean, you get way colder than we do here. So, yeah, I mean, as a general rule of thumb, if the horse isn't clipped, then I'm not going to throw a quarter sheet on because, you know, the coat does the job of regulating the temperature much better than adding stuff, you know, stuff on when I ride. But the horses that are clipped and it's it's fairly cold out, then, uh, yeah, I mean, it's nice. You know, I try and keep them covered as long as possible kind of while they're getting tacked up and, you know, so that when you pull the blanket off, a quarter sheet is a nice thing to throw on or, or, or something just um, – you know, so they're not standing around in the cold, and then um, nice to warm up with one. I I don't really. I have to think here, but I don't really ride with one for the entire ride. So I'm gonna use the the type that kind of do up around the front, and I pull it yeah. off, and then um, also for the reason because you know I think 90% of the horses I'm riding, I use the whip with, and so the whip's not super effective if you're hitting a quarter sheet or a saddle pad or something like that. So. Again, you know, just get going. Just like, just like how you feel when you ride. If you need something to, you know, a jacket on to be warming up with, and then you're going to take the jacket off. You're also going to be taking that quarter sheet off, and then, and and so you know that usually starts when it starts to be about, you know, zero zero degrees. You know, not not. not oh my until, god! Uh, I I'm not I am I am not riding. If it's zero degrees Fahrenheit. Oh, no, I'm talking please. Celsius here. Oh, please. that's okay. Somewhere. So it's like yeah. 32. Okay, okay. Just yeah, just somewhere in there. Somewhere sure. in there, like, you know, we're oh gonna God, start to be zero, using it. 
went outside. Yeah, you know, kind of after after the horses transition from their kind of rain sheet fall rug into the into the more winter riding, then yeah, I'm gonna be using a quarter sheet. So that's you know, it's you're always just every day you take it a little bit different to see, see where you're gonna throw your horse in and uh and if they're overly sweating then, you know, don't be don't be using that stuff. But if the if if it's been off and, and the horse is sweating then yeah, just stick it on, you know, to transition between cooling out to having a cooler on, you know, to getting their blanket back on. So, you know, play it by ear. See what you know, see how you would feel, right? And just just uh go with yeah. that. And then I think one more email so we can make Glenn happy here. Yeah, we're getting um, in trouble from our boss. Oh, that's no. right. I know, we gotta catch up with these. I got things. the whip out today. Well, well <laughs> spurs um, and whips. This one's a question about this is a technology question, so I mean we'll just try and quickly answer this to the best of our uh, ability, but um, somebody's asking for the favorite speaker for playing music when you ride. Um, the arena is far from electric, and I enjoy riding to music, so I often do with earbuds, but I'm not. But I'm sure my horse would enjoy it too. Does anyone have recommendations for a personal speaker that will fit in a pocket for riding and listening to music with iPods? Um, keep up the good show. So any any answers here, well, Glenn? I, I would have a question first question first for you guys is do you think it's important especially freestyle that the horses hear the music yes yeah, yes i thought so too that's yes. what my inclination yeah. would be yeah it would be important for the horse to, to get in crank the it beat up too yeah exactly <laughs> louder the better actually yeah yeah I, just I, in case at a show that you know like <laughs> that the levels they haven't really done the levels really great and then you got some speaker music. And, and you might want to add some sounds. crackling into it, too. Yes, yeah. <laughs> yeah. exactly. Feedback, <laughs> crackling, all that kind of stuff, right? Just in case. So. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I have a, a speaker sound system in my arena. That was one of the presents I gave myself for the reason we're talking about. I think it's really important. So I actually ride with music on and when I'm in there. I'm in there in my arena typically all morning by myself. So, uh, in the horses. And so I enjoy having the music on. So uh, it, it runs through my speaker. So I don't really have a great suggestion, but do you guys have a good suggestion? Well, I think they have some really awesome, uh, newer products where they have, um, just uh, a portable rechargeable electric speaker or docking station for your iPod. You can just, you know, stick that on the side of wherever you're riding. Um, you know, and play it like that. And if you can get, you can get a, a docking station or or just a speaker with a remote control. Then you just need to carry the remote control in your pocket. And you know, you don't like a song, you want to change it, you want to go back, double, you know, hear a song again or whatever. Then you can just quickly do that. And you don't need to be riding with your phone in your pocket. I think that's great. Or or a big speaker in your pocket. But uh, there's tons of brands out there with with cool technology. I think probably just going to Best Buy. Am- and talking to yeah. somebody there and figuring yeah. it out. I recommend Amazon just because of the reviews. Some of these oh, speakers, yeah. From yeah, cool some of these reviews. speakers that uh, attach to iPods and stuff, um, just don't put out a lot of sound. Uh, and that's and you'll see that in the reviews on there. And you're gonna if you're there's a lot of them in the twenty five to forty dollar range. If you're gonna put it in the arena, spend the extra money and get the you're gonna end up with one that's more in the seventy dollar range. And yeah. that's going to provide the sound you need. I just don't think a lot of them that you know hooked your, that you you that dock your iPod and stuff or your iPhone on directly are going to be loud enough for the arena. So make sure you read the reviews because people do bitch about them being loud enough or not. So uh, that's there something you, you want to look that's, at. Yeah, cool. that's a perfect perfect tip. Yeah, you I, I, you're just not going to end up with a cheap one that's going to work. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think you're probably more likely spending. Over a hundred dollars, right? But I, mean, I think it's you know in electronic products, in my experience, that um, I know. By the way, the battery's going to die gonna in an hour. Longer. Yeah. You're going to have to plug that thing in every hour because the batteries are going to die in that pretty quickly. Right I, at home here, we have a a, a Bose speaker that's oh, portable. Oh, you have a good one. Mm, there yeah, you go. I think it was. I'm pretty sure it was over two hundred dollars. Yeah, mean, but it's yeah. it's pretty awesome. Yeah, yeah. Bose are and it's they'll worth get the, it. You could play yeah, rap on there for your horses, and you'd be doing good there. Uh. <laughs> I don't know about rap, but we'll we'll we'll, uh, we'll, we'll make a note uh, to to talk about what music selections we make. We'll do that next next time. So, uh, <laughs> everybody, you can find our show notes and links to today's guests on our website dressageradio.com. Like us on Facebook, just search Dressage Radio Show. 
Follow us on Twitter at Horse Radio. My website is maplecrestfarmky.com, and my email is reese at horseradionetwork.com. You can find me at philipparksequestrian.com, and my email is philip at horseradionetwork.com. I'd like to thank our sponsors this week for allowing us to put on a good show. And don't forget to check out all the other shows on the Horse Radio Network at horseradionetwork.com. Everybody, keep your heels down and your shoulders back, and we'll talk to you next week. Thank you.